Inside the Intervals, episode 3, guys. Welcome back. I am with, with your host, Chris. By myself at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So, I will be getting the rest of the guys uh, in um, the next week or so to actually do a group podcast again. Um, I thought I might as well do one by myself because uh, there's been a lot to there's been a lot to talk about, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to get um, the stuff I wanted to do out. So I know it's been uh, two weeks since the NBA finals. I'm going to cover that. Talk a little bit about the NBA draft that happened on Friday, and uh, of course, I'm going to talk about the trades that have just happened and free agency as well, and so forth, and teams that I feel like you know underachieved or how they need to improve them so forth yeah so with that being said uh just sit back and relax and just have a listen if you have any thoughts guys or any views to add to my podcast of course leave it down in the comment section let me know have a discussion there talk about what you think um you know what team you support what changes you would like to see so First thing first, I'd like to say congratulations to the Toronto Raptors for taking this year's championship home. Um, it's their first conference finals and their first um, NBA finals championship. So, you know, they, they've made history and uh, Toronto is going crazy. They are going crazy right now. They're still going crazy. I mean, even the parade was just uh, literally last weekend. And even before that, you know, they went crazy. So... They have every right, they deserve it. Any city who's won the championship deserves to go crazy, man. But this is the first one in history, so I hope there's more to come. I think they're a good, solid team, especially with Kawhi on that team. You know, it makes the team a lot better. You know, I'm 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 pretty I'm glad that this year they didn't get swept by any team because last year they got swept by the Cleveland Cavaliers in how many games? You know, and. It, it, you know, it's been a, it's been an up and down spiral thing for the Raptors, but now they are able to compete, and they are definite contenders for the future. If Kawhi stays, I think even if Kawhi leaves, I think the Raptors can still contend. But they've just lost a big piece to that team, to that structure. So you know, but either way, I think um, overall, I think the Raptors. Pref- performance in the playoffs was overall it was overall good i wouldn't say it was the best i've seen but it was good and it was uh it was interesting to see because they were trailing for i think it was for two of the series and they just pulled it back i think no i think they were trading for the first for the first three of the series actually to be fair from the first round second round and conference finals so it just goes to show what 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 dedication they had to make changes to improve throughout the playoffs just so they could win you know, and of course to the Warriors who were the runners up. Of course, I think a lot of a lot of NBA fans wanted to see the Warriors go down, which is expected. You know, I mean, I want to see the Warriors lose just because of the simple fact that we need a change, and I think it's time that that we got that change. You know, but the Raptors again. I mean, sorry, not the Raptors. The Warriors again went you no know, got expectations down throughout the playoffs. Yeah, they didn't win it all, but. You know, next season they can come back stronger, or, or you know, maybe make a few trades here and there to make to get a couple pieces that they think for that they were missing and stuff. I mean, the only reason the only reason the, the Warriors, I, I'd say personally, lost is because of injuries. You know, KD, Clay, two of the biggest parts of their offense and defense, and unfortunately, it just it 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 pretty much drained them. It drained them. It drained them physically. Mentally and emotionally, so you could see that. I think even Steph showed one of the biggest signs because of that when Clay went out. So it's just it's hard to try and gather your thoughts after you know one of your teammates has got an injury now. That's and the thing is with KD and Clay's injury, it looked like it, it could be they could be out for the season. So who knows? I'm, I'm guessing they could come back before the end of the season. Or they could come back around halfway of the season, but I think it's one of those things. It's it could be season ending, but I don't think it's going to ruin because I mean they are coming up. To, they are in free agents. They will be free agents soon. I don't think it's going to ruin ruin their stock as players. They're big names, and any team would be lucky to have them, even if they're injured or not. As simple as so. Um, yeah, but enough talks about uh, the playoffs and such. That's 
happened pretty much two weeks ago now let's get into the draft a little bit now um this year's draft was interesting and i think it was pretty obvious who we knew was going to go number one which was um which was obviously zion williams zion williams um you know good player six five two hundred and something pounds very heavy guy for a six five guy as well and um all i can say is that the pelicans picked him up nicely they picked him up nicely um obviously following you know you got rj barrett john Morant, and you obviously deandre hunter not in that particular order i think anyway but yeah those were the top four picks um i think all four of those picks will be interesting to see what they can do for their teams that desired i think for a team like for teams like the memphis grizzlies they're definitely rebuilding i can and they can do with someone like uh john Morant. you know rebuilding they're trying to rebuild they got rid of mike Conley and Mark Gasol, so they're making sure that they rebuild and restructure the team. Uh, the Lakers, we got DeAndre Hunter. I think it's a good addition, could probably help LeBron. You know, LeBron is getting older and DeAndre Hunter can help, help LeBron out, hopefully, I hope. And of course we have the Knicks now. The Knicks have been pretty much suffering for the last couple of years now. And what hurts even more is that Pozingis is now playing with the Dallas Mavericks. And it's just made it's just made the Knicks look so silly that they would trade the, you know a player that they was building around. But hopefully now they can build around someone else. They didn't boo RJ Barrett when it came to the draft pick. So let's see if the Knicks can actually hold it together. The organization itself can actually hold it together and build around him. Now I understand, you know, they've got a few players there like um over the over over trades that happened in the season halfway through after all after the all-star weekend and um i will say this is that i think they've got a few bad contracts so the knicks will have to do something about that and i think a lot of teams i have that anyway so the knicks aren't the only one so they just have to look and try and find the best possible solution for them and see what works so with that being said, I think this year's draft was interesting. It was interesting to see a few college guys um, go get pushed back further in the in the rankings, and then get some of them got put put earlier. So it, it's interesting, really. Um, the one thing I can say about the draft that's been happening over the last couple of years is that um, it's always a popularity buzz, and I'm, I'm kind of glad that the Lakers didn't get the second pick. I can't be, I'm kind of glad we got pushed down because. Um, I realize is that whenever we choose someone it's because of popularity um i feel like d'angelo russell yeah when we picked him it was popularity but at the same time he can play you know lonzo is the same thing you know d'angelo hunter i've seen glimpses of him it's sort of the same thing they can prove but but, but they prove to be good players i hope d'angelo hunter can do the same thing you know what i mean so getting into the, the lakers um I will say this, that I'm happy that we got Anthony Davis, but I'm not happy how we have to trade our young core players to get him. What I don't like about what I don't like about this is that, you know, uh, the Pelicans actually refused to take him after the All-Star weekend, refused to trade him after the All-Star weekend because the Lakers were pretty much, seriously, like because LeBron was talking to, to the head office, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart. I think at least five or six players were offered for Anthony Davis. And I'm thinking that's not worth one player. And I think we still traded five players for Anthony Davis because the two future future first round picks, including Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball. Now, out of the out of the three that got traded, I felt like we could have kept Ingram. Lonzo, Josh Hart, mm, I get it. I kind of get it. But at the same time, we did. We still do need a point guard. But I guess it kind of benefits the New Orleans team because they are trying to push the boundary now. And hopefully that team can come together and see what they can do. Now, AD coming here, I don't want to hear it from anybody else, but the Lakers are a contending team. We are contenders. We've made ourselves contenders. Now, my problem is this. LeBron... I feel like I know LeBron is the star player of the Lakers. I know he is of that team. But if you have an input 
to trade players and the request of players that you want, it's making it hard for the teammates or real teammates around you to even be around you or to even trust you because you might want to trade it in an instant. I get it. You're the star of that team. You're the star of the LA show. But can we not act Hollywood, please? Can we play basketball and think about the best moves for the team as a whole? You know? Magic Johnson resigned. I get why he resigned. I get it. You know, he explained himself and he said himself, and he explained himself why he resigned. I get it. But at the same time, it's like, well, this is Los Angeles. This is LA. This is it, it's Hollywood. It's right now we I, I get it, but come on, we're playing basketball here. All we need to do is just focus on making good moves for the team. Now I understand. With the Lakers right now, we kind of stretch for who we want. We want uh, a season beforehand, we won the Paul George. We won LeBron James, now we got LeBron James. Yeah? We wanted all these other players, they haven't come. Kawhi, I don't think he's coming to the Lakers. I think he's better off going to the Clippers. Reason why I think that team is defensively better and they need an offensive firepower, which and Kawhi can do both if he does decide to leave the Raptors. Yeah, we need the point guard position filled. The reason why we need it filled is because we traded away Lonzo and Josh Hart. We had two good, promising guards, young guards. I I don't care what people have to say about Lonzo because I've always had hopes for Lonzo. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of pressure to him because of what his dad said. Forget about what Navar said. It's about Lonzo when you're playing the game, right? Lonzo is playing this game, right? Lonzo has actually been performing, but people have expected so much from him that he's had to kind of step back a little bit. I've, I've seen it in games. I've seen it where it's like, he, he doesn't want to do certain things he, he wants to do. Unfortunately, you know, it's a lot of naysayers and a lot of, I think even some Lakers fans as well saying, oh, you know, Lonzo could have been, a, we could have got a, lot, a better pick than Lonzo. I get it. We could have got Malik Monk last year. I was hoping the Lakers would pick him rather than Lonzo because we needed a guard. But did we do? We traded D'Angelo Russell, who's having a better, who's having a really good career in, in Brooklyn right now. We get Lonzo. Now Lonzo isn't a bad point guard. I think he's good. He's an old school type of PG. But I think my issue is is that he, because of the pressure around him, he can't perform. And I think he's good. He's good. He's gone to New Orleans where that pressure is taken off massively. Because being on a team like the Los Angeles Lakers, you have to be able to perform, you know? And I think for a lot of us Lakers fans, we're expecting, if you come to the Lakers, you have to be a player that wants to contend for a championship. Fair enough. I think everybody, I think every player should have that mindset, contending for a championship. But we have to focus on the smaller process here. Well, I mean, the bigger process, sorry. Is what? Rebuilding restructuring then contending we can't just focus on contending without restructuring or even trying to rebuild and i think that's the issue we've missed is because lebron is on our team now as soon as lebron came to the lakers everybody's saying well you guys are contending because lebron's on your team that's not the case i mean i never expected the lakers to make the playoffs Maybe the first half of the season I did because I saw, okay, we're seventh, we're eighth. I wouldn't mind if we're eight if we're the eighth seed. That's it. I mean, just get knocked out in the first round. Cool. That is our. That is something we have to deal with. Cool. But we didn't make any of our expectations. I felt like we could have done better. Honestly, I felt like we could have done better. There were teams in the West that I felt like that should have made the playoffs. Like the Sacramento Kings, for example, didn't make the playoffs. But they, I think they overachieved more than the Lakers did. Honestly. Now, we have AD. We have Anthony Davis. I, I don't want to hear it now. You know, Lakers, we are contending. We are honestly contending. If we don't make the playoffs this year, then something is clearly wrong. Something is clearly wrong. I don't want to hear, oh, well, you know, it's down to, uh, or the organization. No, 
at this point, it's down to coaching. It's down to the team, the players, right? And we just got, we recently just got a new coach as well, uh, Frank Vogel. He was a good coach, especially for the Indiana Pacers back in the back in the early days of Paul George on that Indiana Pacers team when against the Miami Heat, LeBron's Miami Heat. So him being a coach on this team, it, it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. And then, then we made we got Jason Kidd as an assistant coach. I think our defense will go up. Now we've got AD, we've got LeBron. Cool. We can we have con to contend. Our PG spot is still not filled. It's still not filled. Why do the Lakers think it's okay to get rid of our young core again? I'm frustrated at the fact that young players, I mean, any player is expendable, but to rebuild and have a good process of trying to get a team to make the playoffs, it comes from the young core. If you can't make them compete or you just trade away young players on the bench or in the starting lineup, we're just going to have guys who are overpaid, tired, non-athletic and can't do the things they did when they were younger. AD's still young. Cool, he's got time. LeBron has been conditioning himself really well for a 34 year old playing basketball. So I do expect that high level still and he has given that. The point guard position, I would like to see the Lakers now chase Kemba Walker. I know a lot of Lakers fans like, Kemba, he, he's not better than Kyrie. I would prefer to have Kyrie. No, I don't want Kyrie on my team. Honestly, I don't want Kyrie on my team. I, the reason why I don't want Kyrie is because I feel like he's underachieved when he was at Boston. If he comes to the Lakers... What makes you think he's going to do any anything of the same or anything different? He's going to be doing something of the same of what he was doing at Boston, especially if if the Lakers are not winning games. Get someone like Kemba Walker, who's an experienced point guard, who's had experience playing with a team that's not that great. Now, I'm sure a lot of Hornets fans don't want to see Kemba go. I wouldn't mind to see him go because... He, I'm sure in his mind he wants to win. He's an underrated point guard. Him and Mike Conley. Mike Conley just went to the Utah Jazz. I think the Jazz have made the right move to go forward. To, to at least get into the playoffs, to get into good rankings and maybe even contend. It's pushed them that much better now. The Lakers... We're going to be struggling if we don't find someone who's good at the point guard. Yeah, we have Rondo. Defensively, he's good. He can attack the basket. But he's not as swift as he used to be. Offensively, he can't shoot the ball. We need a point guard who can shoot. And don't get me wrong. Us Lakers, we do have some shooters. But now we have to start focusing on filling that one spot. Chase Kemba. Don't chase Kyrie, please. I, I want to have Kemba on my team. I want to have a solid point guard who just does the job. That's all I want. Going into Kemba's situation, I think Kemba honestly should test free agency. He he should really test it. The reason why I, I think he should not go back to the horn is, is because I feel like they're going to pay him too much to the point where the Hornets are not going to be able to build around him. That's the problem with the lower tier teams. They'll pay max contracts to one player and they cannot build. Look at, for example, look at the Phoenix Suns. They have Devin Booker. He has got a max contract. I get it. For the time of play he is, he's good. But this is the problem. You have no money to offer any other players to come and play for that team. You have to offer, you have to offer bummy contracts to players who who can't do much who are role players and i get it, it's good to have role players it's good to have that depth but what about the starting lineup we're talking about having other stars in different teams this is the problem i have with lower tier teams is that offering the max just to keep one player or even two players is, is kind of silly to me 
Washington Wizards is another example. John Wall has been out with for an injury throughout the whole year. Yet he's on like a 200 mil contract for five, maybe what, seven years now. You cannot build around him. You cannot get any more players now. You've ruined your chance. It's hard to play for it's hard for lower tier teams to get guys when they are offering the max to one player. Well, two, because they've got Bradley Brill still. I don't know if the Lakers are still chasing him. I wouldn't mind to get him too, because he is a shooter. But it's all about timing and it's all about the right fit of chemistry and it's also about the cap space. I think it, it it's silly for teams to want certain players when they know their cap space is going to be a problem. They know. They know this. They know this. You know, I mean, look at the Warriors, for example. They were talking about, because of the new stadium they're building, they're up in ticket prices and they're not worried about the cap space. Because they want to keep all their stars. They want to resign all their stars. They don't have the cap space. But they can use the luxury tax. And I'm thinking, okay, fine. Use your luxury tax. But that means you're going over your cap, aren't you? But then they're saying the new stadium, they'll up the ticket prices and it will sell out some it will sell out all the time. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. You're risking it. The Warriors are actually risking that. And I think, you know, KD leaving, I can see him leaving. I can see him out of his player option. Clay, I can see him up to now his player option too. Because I think Clay deserves to be on the team where his role is can be fully maximized now. When he was on the Warriors before KD came, he, he was second. He was a second string. It was obvious. He was there. His role wasn't really diminished. But now his role has diminished. But when it came to the playoffs, he stepped up. And then you start to realize how vital Clay is. So whatever Clay. Wherever team Clay goes to, Clay will be fine. I think Clay could go to any team that he wants. Really, he could fit into any any type of role on on a, on on any team. That two guard position, he is versatile. KD is the same thing. I don't I don't I don't think he will stay. I don't think he will. But if he does, fine. Prove me wrong. But Clay, I would like him to test free agency just in case if there's something else other than the Warriors for him. You know? Another player who I feel like who, who has underachieved is Kyrie Irving. I feel like this season he's underachieved. But I think the Celtics in general have underachieved. Last season, they were there. And they said when Kyrie and, and Hayward would come back, they'll be at the top of their game. Well, they wasn't. They was the middle of the, they was the middle of the seed. They, they they swept the first round, but then when they get to the second round, they got swept. It didn't make any sense. You've underachieved. You have actually underachieved. I think Kyrie. And Hayward coming back from their injuries didn't help the Celtics whatsoever. I think when they got to the playoffs, they just focused on getting to the first round and they focused on after. My issue is this now. Kyrie, you know, didn't opt into his play option. Cool, fine, fair enough. Now he wants to sign with the Lakers or the Brooklyn Nets. And I'm thinking... If he comes to the Lakers, so be it. I don't mind. He is a point guard. He's a good one, and we do need one to. Fill, we do need to fill the spot of that. But if he goes to the Nets, there's no point of him going to the Nets. Why go to the Nets when they have a team? In in some sort of way, Kyrie is actually a diva. He knows. He knows the Nets have a point guard already, a solid one, D'Angelo Russell, who I think is a better fit for that team. If he does go there, or if he does talk to him, he's like, well, I know Kyrie, he's going to be like, well, it's either me or him. That's why a lot of the teams will not, in a lot of teams will not be interested in you anymore. 
This is why a lot of teams are interested in Kawhi Leonard because he stays quiet. He stays quiet. He's a secluded person. He may talk to the GM first about what he wants to do, but that's sometimes it's better off. You're better off doing that than talking to your teammates. You showing diva qualities is not going to get you on the team that you want. Now, speaking of Kawhi Leonard, um, I know a lot of people are talking about, you know, him leaving the Raptors, going to LA. You know, I don't think I don't think he should come to the Lakers. Well, I don't think I think he even said he doesn't want to go there because he doesn't want to be the third string, especially if um, well now that we got AD. So Kawhi is looking at the LA Clippers. And I think the Clippers is a good fit for him, especially when that, that team as well. You know, when they when they were play, when they had that series against the Warriors, um, they were defensively irritating. They were defensively irritating towards the Warriors, and Kawhi being there on that team defensively will make them will make them better, and offensively better too. Kawhi's offensive game has developed so much over the years. Now, obviously, you know, Kawhi, his situation is, if he resigns, it's an impact for the Raptors. If he goes somewhere else, it's an impact for that team, you know? I think Kawhi is happy as long as he just gets his max contract and just focuses on winning the championship again or with that team he's focused on. Because I feel like Kawhi is one of those players who can get his team to the playoffs, especially with his defensive Morale. He can make the whole he can make the whole team defensively better when he's on the floor. So let's just see what happens with his choice. I don't think um anybody will be surprised if he leaves or stays. I just think that we'll be we'll be more surprised of his decision on where to go on a team. You know? In my honest opinion, I don't mind what he does. You know, because I think defensively and offensively he's improving the team that he goes on. You know? Going into KD's trade, well, trade, sorry. I mean, going into the KD's free agency, he can go to any team he wants. Now, I think KD should do this. KD should actually think about his legacy and actually go to a lower tier team. The reason why I say this is because he can rebuild that team. Turn that team into a contending team and that's your re legacy redefined as it is. Because a lot of people, you know, call KD's legacy, well, define legacy, define his legacy as what? A snake, right? Well, let's see him leave, go to another team, a lower tier team, and progress that team. Either way, KD is capable of playing with anyone he wants to. Anybody he wants to. So, with that being said, that's a good focus. That's a good focus point for him. I think that's what he should do, honestly. Um, you know, take it take it as a pinch of salt. But that's what I think he should do, honestly. If he's focusing on going to a, you know, if he's still focused on winning the championship still, then yeah, fine, stay with the Warriors. You know, I think he, I think it's 50-50 on him. Definitely 50-50. Now, with the whole um, free agency happening in a few weeks, I think uh, the guys who I've just mentioned will be the most ones, will be the most that everyone is talking about. And um, of course, you're going to see some crazy like players getting silly offers and whatnot. So uh, my advice is this, is that, like I said, to the lower tier teams, you should be focusing on adding extra players or stars to your roster. Do not offer your main person the max where you can't get anybody to the higher tier teams you should just be focusing on your depth how you can build you know and i think one team that really needs to work on their depth is uh okay it's the whole Oklahoma city thunder now don't get me wrong okc kind of paul george and was russell westbrook right but the problem is is that both of these players are ball dependent and I, and I get why they're ball dependent. It's because they don't have anybody that can play off them or shoot around them. You know? I think even OKC said they were they were actually open on trading uh, Steven Adams and two other players. And I'm thinking, well, I think Steven Adams is a good fit. 
he's you know he's a good center. I just don't see the point on why they can't focus to get shooters. Get shooters for that team. That team doesn't really have any depth. The players that are on the bench, they can't play around Russell Westbrook or Paul George. So imagine those two are taking most of the scoring load and when they get cold, no one can, else can do anything. No one else can do anything. That doesn't make any sense. You've got to, you've got to have some type of depth around your, around your star players. Otherwise, you are going to suffer. Do you, does, does, do these teams not understand that? I think a lot of these teams, this is how a lot of, this is how a lot of um, star teams like OKC kind of plummet down in the ranks because there's no depth. There's no control to what, you know, these star players can do. And when the star players are out, are out of gas, they can't rely on nobody but themselves. That's the issue. And we saw that in the first round of the playoffs. OKC, you know, they 4-1, it's, an, it's, not, it's not pre. It is not pre. I will say this, though, that... You know, they have really got, you know, OKC have really got to rethink their strategies. They've actually got to focus on players who want to be in that organization and who are looking to actually progress. If I was OKC, yeah, get rid of some players and, apply, and get another star if needed be. If no one on the bench is going to do anything, get another star that can take on the rest of the scoring load. Then that way, when Russell Westbrook and Paul Jules go cold, they have someone else to rely on. And if that third person goes cold, then the bench don't really have to do much. And I think teams have showed that before. So, with that being said, free agency is going to be very interesting. I definitely want to see who gets traded who who is gonna buy into their player options? Who's gonna sign with who? So um, just have your popcorn ready, guys, and just just hope for the best. And if whoever whatever team you're supporting, just hope you know you guys can actually just build a better team, make your team stronger, keep your assets if needed be, or throw away some assets if you don't need them at all. And uh, so be it. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the podcast um, episode three in the books. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, also, comment down below if uh, if you have any topics that you want me to discuss in future podcasts. Also, discuss this one now yourselves as well, so I just so I can see and have a read. And um, don't forget to follow my social media links in my in my description box down below. And I'll see you for the next one. Peace.